Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Saturday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great in these crazy chaotic times. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and the bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. So, I'm going back to my last bit. I'm pretty sure I haven't told this story. Uh, I, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I haven't. And I think I was saving the story because obviously you don't have a million personal stories to tell. You know what I mean? They're limited and I wanted to keep some stories for later on. So... This story is about fighting my celly and just the story that, you know, kind of built up to it. So I got to Lindsay, I was coming off the street and I was in a rough position. I had a crazy mohawk shaved in my head. I was all sucked out. I was like 165 pounds. I was smashing hair and I was smashing blow and I was just in rough shape. And, you know, I was a guy that was pretty well known, you know, a lot of guys in Lindsay Jail, in the Toronto system, in the federal system, they know me, right? They, they respected me, and I wasn't like some dude that everybody thought of as this junkie. But the reality was, that's what I was a lot of the time in the street. I was just pretty good at hiding that, because within a couple weeks of being inside, I put on size. But last time, I was especially bad. I was especially beaten up, and I'd kind of lost my mind. You know, I was... I was not the typical me. And I really didn't want to be in prison. I was just kind of going through it again. And even though I was maniacal when I was on the street just before I got arrested, at this point, I was starting to come out of the fog because I was sober. Now, when I got arrested, I was obviously down and dirty, heroin addiction. And I didn't want to go to the block and tough it out. So I went to SEG for a couple days to try and clean out. But what I hadn't realized was the day I got arrested, I drank 100 mils of methadone. So I went down to SEG, slept three days, figured, this is strange, why am I not sick? And said, whatever, I'm going back up to the block. It, it felt literally like instantaneously. As soon as I got up on the block, boom, all the power came out of my legs. I started dragging, uh, uh, and I guess the, the methadone just had long legs and it was just starting to wear off now and I was just starting to get sick. When I went to the block, guys were looking at me like, who's this dude? And even the guys that knew me were kind of like, yeah, what's up, dog? Like, you okay? How are things, you know? And to be honest, it was like the first time since Tyak where I kind of had a hard time when I first got arrested. It wasn't like I was getting bullied or nothing like that, but I wasn't getting shown no love. There was no love. And I knew immediately the only way that I was gonna get my respect back was by earning it back. So I was in the back, I was in my cell, just talking to my cellie, shaking it rough, trying to clean up. And I remember it was like 14 days no sleep. The only time I got slept, uh, any sleep, my homie sent me a little piece of junk. Just said, you know, use it wisely. Help yourself taper down. And that's what I did. That's what I did. And man, I'm telling you, within like two months, I was over 210 pounds. I basically put all my size back on. And I was working out every day. And I was getting back onto the block. And being comfortable again and smoking and chilling with the dogs. And I remember one day I was doing a workout and I was carrying the water bags and one slipped out of my hand and the guy who made the water bags was this big jack dude. He had a bullet hole in his cheek. He looked like a menacing, crazy white dude. Big goatee, all his teeth rotten, 230 pounds, just jacked, like older dude though, right? He starts screaming at me and I'm just thinking in my head like, bro, like... Chill. So I told him, I said, man, you need to bring it down. It's a weight. Like, relax. It wasn't on purpose. I'm obviously not slapping off the ground. Chill out. But I, at this point, I still didn't feel 100%. This guy was big, and I didn't feel like I had any chance 
of fighting this guy. So I just kind of played my position for a little bit. More training. More training. More training. Eat, 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 eat. More training. More training. And before long, I was part of the dogs them, part of the man them, people that basically forgot how I had looked when I got arrested. Because now I was like 225, 230 pounds and ready to rock and roll pretty much with anybody because I was back in prison mode and I knew I was going to be doing a bit. So what had happened was basically the server position came up and there was a few guys that had more seniority on the block than me. One guy wasn't really like cool with me all that much, this black dude, but was cool with the other server who was this big jack dude. So I ended up being the other server because the other dudes that had seniority ahead of me kind of passed on it. And I was like, whatever, I'll get there. You know, your cell's open all day. You can use the phone. You run the shower program if it's locked down. So you get to be out. You, you know, you call people. Uh, you can call four people that are on the block. You get lots of extra food. You're just out of your cell all day. And, uh, you know, it's just a more comfortable living if you're in the provincial system. And I remember I'd moved into the cell. It was like two days in the cell. And I had been smoking weed with, with the dude all night long. I was just burning it down with him. And when I was smoking, I ate a bagel. And I remember cutting a bagel with a comb because that's what we used to do. We used just a, one of those black combs, clean black comb, and it slices through bagels perfectly. And I remember doing that, and I guess some crumbs had gotten on the floor. So I was sleeping. I wake up and this dude's standing there like, yo, you're gonna spill crumbs on the floor, bro? Ah! And he's like wiling out on me over crumbs. Crumbs on the floor. I jump up, I'm like, bro, really? Over crumbs? Buddy, I'm burning it down with you all night and you're wiling out at me over crumbs? Seriously, yo, bro, you don't like it? You don't have to live here, dog. Blah. I, you know, I, I'm a temperamental guy. I had a hard time keeping my cool and I realized that was just me and him. The cells are locked. Like, none of your homies are jumping me. It's me and you one-on-one -on -one right now. So I pushed him and I said, so what up, bro? You want to do this? Let's do this. And I immediately saw his heart just drop out of him. Which, instantaneously, I knew this guy was big for nothing. He'll bully guys. He'll hit guys if they're already beat up. He'll kick guys in the head if they're already jumped on. He's a bully. He's big for nothing. People are probably scared of him. He does not know how to fight. I pushed him. And the man was like, <laughs> shook. And this is a big dude. Like, I'm telling you, a big dude. So, after that, he kind of became soft. He kind of just became a good dude. Like, I actually started kind of liking the guy. And we would make brews. And we would pitch in on the block and make these huge, big brews. We had a guy on the block that his nickname was The Mechanic. And he could make a pruno, is what they call it in the States. Here we call it brew. That tasted like Alizé and was potent. Tasted like hard, hard liquor. I'm telling you, it was crazy. And it's not even moonshine. It's just brew. This guy just knew what he was doing. So maybe like once every couple weeks, everybody would save up their oranges, their sugars and stuff. And we'd pitch in and we'd make a huge brew. The whole range would get smashed. Because me and him were the servers... We were able to put in the most stuff, the most sugar, the most oranges, ray, ray, ray. So we got 13 500 milliliter pot bottles of brew to share between me and him. So we're drinking, right? We're drinking. We start, we start at, at like prior to lunch, maybe like an hour before lunch, and then into lunch, okay? So remember, we're the servers. Two guys had snuck out and stayed out. But everybody else on the block is locked up and chilling and drinking in their cells. And the four of us are down in the server cell, smoking, drinking, chilling, whatever. And I remember this guy's hammered. Like he's just pounded bottles and he's hammered. I've only drank three or four bottles. He's almost finished. So I take the bottles and I separate them and I put them away so this guy chills out. He's going up to every block and every cell and just giving out booze because he's so drunk. And like, he's drank already his share. I don't mind sharing with him, but like, you're not just gonna give the crap away to everybody else on the block because you're drunk. This is not happening. So when he came back down to the cell, he's looking for the brew. He's like, yo, where's the brew, dog? Yo, where's the brew? 
I'm like, I have the brew. We're going to drink the brew together. But you're not just going to keep running around the block and giving out the brew. And this guy starts wilding out. Yo, 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 yo. And keep in mind that there's four of us in the cell. So there's this young kid. There's this other dude that's, he's a young guy. But he's an established guy. A well-known guy who hangs around with some well-known guys. And he is a fighter. He is a fighter. And then there's the other server and me. So he's now, yo, you guys take my booze. And he's talking to this other dude. This other, not the young kid, the other dude though. And he, yo, you take my stuff, blah, 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 blah. And he's wiling out. And the guy says, yo, bro, like, yo, homie, you need to bring it down a notch before it kicks off in here. And, he, and I think even though he was kind of acting like he was super drunk, I don't think he was as drunk as he was acting. I think he was using that as an excuse to act ignorant and kind of wild out. And he realized quickly that this guy wasn't going to allow him to say nothing. He was going to get punched in his face. And he immediately focused his disdain to me. Well, I knew this was coming. He had already disrespected me too many times in the past. And I wasn't about to let it happen again. And I just fired off on him. Sue me. This guy's in there clowning everybody up, talking shit to everybody, getting in everybody's faces. I just, oh, one time, bet right there. Woo, boom, he hits the ground, and now he's laid up against the wall like this, stretched out on the ground. I just stood over top of him. See, buddy? Like, you need to chill. It's not, it's not happening like that. Like, we're men in here, brother. You run around the range, punch everybody in the face all you want. These guys aren't convicts. These guys are guys in on a domestic abuse. These aren't criminals, brother. You think this attitude is going to fly down below or you can really talk this way to anybody if you're not prepared to defend it or one shot's going to lay you out like that? You need to keep it up. Like, so now he's turned baby. Now he's following me around like a puppy dog. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I don't know if, you know, how many of you guys have done time, but once that happens, you're finished. You're finished on the block. And I'm done. You're not living in the cell with me no more. It's a wrap. I can't trust you no more. You gotta go. So the guys on the range are talking for him, trying to clean up the, 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 the mess for him. But he's here like, bro, I'm sorry. And it's just, I can smell blood. So I give him another shot, boom, right in the mouth. Swell up his face again, okay? Guys are just begging for him. Yo, yo, Clarky, come on, man, just, I don't know, man. When you're in that prison mode and you smell blood like that and you know somebody's just soft like that, he's been talking so much, you just wanna fire off and just destroy this dude. But they're like, yo, man, how about if he just moves to cell 15, he just backs, you know, Backs out of the cleaners out. Like I said, that can't happen. The only way that he's staying, he comes to the back and he fights me like a man. And nobody wanted this to happen because we were drinking. It was heat bag. But that happens on blocks when you drink. People go crazy. Don't drink in prison if you don't want to fight. Every block where there's a whole block drinking, there's going to be some kind of a squabble. 100%. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't want to fight me. And now he's standing underneath the TV just being a heat bag, swell up face. Copper's coming to do a walk. He walks off the block. And as he's walking off the block, he says, the other server attacked me. The other server attacked me. So now we're sitting in there not realizing what really went down. And all of a sudden, key up. Captain's in there. Group of guards are in there cuffing me up, taking me to seg, and I just got my pendant. So this is gonna affect my classification. I'm figuring it out, man, this is crazy. This guy's such a goof. This guy is such a goof. How can some big muscle head like that be such a bird? I, I don't get it. The guy's a jail guy. I think he's just drunk. And I think sometimes when your true colors come out, when you're drunk like that, it's just better to find out on a block when he's getting punched in the face rather than he's out on a murder bit with somebody or on like an attempted murder bit where he locks everybody up for 20 years because he's soft. Man, man got me put in seg. 
I got released from SEG like two days before I got transferred. Got to package up a little bit before I went down to the pen. And that was the last beef I got into provincial system. The last time I was in the provincial system in Ontario, Central East Correctional Center. 1F, man. 1F. And after I came back from SEG, he was gone. Who knows where this dude went. I went over to 1A and got to chill with some of the dogs. Smoked for a few days because that block had it up. Had it up, had it up. And then went down to the pen. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys. So you guys don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my finger, nobody goes back to prison. Nobody goes to the bucket. Nobody's addicted to drugs. There's no trauma, none of that. That's what I do, but that's not reality, especially in 2021. Sometimes you're, you're just going to find yourself in a precarious situation. Might not be prison. Who knows what it is. But if you do go to prison, it's better you can watch these videos and have an idea of what to expect. Now, the bucket which is where this story is from, this is Central East Correctional Center, is definitely not prison. And you get a lot of fuckery, people acting stupid, trying to flex on you. Young guys think they're the crap, or guys with phony reputations because they're big. I'm not the toughest guy in the world, never was the toughest guy in the world, don't claim to be the toughest guy in the world. But it's like this guy never been in a fight in his life. If you could please hit that like button. If you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. Did I sucker punch him? Kinda, I guess. I don't really think it's a sucker punch. He was looking at me. He was being disrespectful. And at the end of the day, it is what it is, man. It's prison. You can only say so much to somebody, even if somebody is a calm, gentle, nice dude like myself. Someone who just wants to do their own time, not messing with nobody. But I definitely can throw my hands and will protect myself. And in prison, if you don't think along those lines, you could be a victim. This guy was looking for victims. That's what he wanted. Somebody who would just cower under his pressure so he could build a phony reputation. And you can't let that happen on your watch. Love each and every one of you. The new Matt Clark.